Fabulous. Thank you all for joining me for a 75 minute 26 and 2 yoga class. As you may know, today is um, non-binary gender awareness day. My pronouns are she, her, hers, um, and I'm so happy to be here with all of you. My name is Holly if we haven't met. For the beginning of class, we're going to start with three rounds of sun salutes to warm up our bodies, and then we're going to hop into 26 and 2 yoga. If at any point something doesn't feel right for you, remember that you are welcome to modify a posture, do something else, or skip entirely. Yoga can be challenging at times, and that's okay, but we're never going to a point of pain, point where we could cause harm to ourselves or others. For the sun salutes, come towards the top of your mat with your feet close together, arms down by your side. I'm going to stand back a bit and show you in periphery. Take a moment here, standing up nice and tall. Feel your feet firmly rooted into the floor. Bring your hands together at heart center. And we'll begin with three rounds of Surya Namaskar A Sun Salute. As you inhale, lift your arms up overhead. Look up as if you're saluting or greeting the sun. Slowly exhale through your nose. Bend your knees, fold forward, hands to floor, relax your head. Inhale, lengthen into a halfway lift. You can have your hands on your thighs, your shins, or the floor in front of you. Exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor, and step back into a high plank or a tabletop position. On your next exhale, hug your elbows in and lower down halfway. Inhale, come up into a back bend. You can do cobra with elbows bent and thighs on the floor, or up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. Can bend one knee, straighten out the other, pedal out your legs, and then press your heels to the floor, hips to the ceiling, drop your head, look for your thighs behind you. If down dog is not speaking to you, come down onto your knees. Uh, take a child's pose instead. Sink your hips down as you reach your arms forward. Always feels so good. On your next inhale, hands to the floor. Look forward, step forward, lengthen, halfway lift. Slowly exhale as you fold, let your head hang heavy. Inhale, arms with your ears, hands together, root to rise, lift up, look up. Exhale, hands down, two more. Inhale, lift up, slowly exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen, look forward, hips over heels, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, hands to floor, step back into your high plank or tabletop, and let's hold here for a moment. If that lowering down motion does not feel right for you, Skip it, go straight from your plank or tabletop directly into your down dog or child's pose. Otherwise, pull your abdomen in, bring your elbows in, and lower down halfway. Inhale, come up into a back bend. You can do uh, elbows bent, thighs on the floor. If you're doing up dog, arms straight, thighs off the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, or sink your hips down for child's pose. Either way, spread your fingers wide. Root down through all 28 knuckles, the space between your index finger and thumb. On your next inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen back into your halfway lift, tabletop back. Slowly exhale as you fold, relax your head. Inhale, arms with your ears, hands together, lift up, look up. Exhale slowly, hands down. Last one. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step back, high plank, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, your up dog. Exhale, your down dog. If you're doing down dog, try to get your heels to the floor. If your heels don't touch the floor, you can try taking a wider stance here. If you have tight knees, you can micro bend your knees to take pressure away from the backs of the legs. Otherwise, press the thighs back, lift the hips up, push the floor away from you. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, root to rise, lift. Exhale, hands down. Wonderful. So that's our little warm up. We will now hop into 26 and 2 yoga, beginning with two sets of pranayama, standing deep breathing, good for your lungs and respiratory system. Come to the middle of your mat with your feet together, toes, heels touching nicely. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to class. Concentrate, meditate, and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up. Suck your stomach in. Fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. Exhale through your mouth. H-A, sound head back. Arms forward, elbows touch. Good, inhale. Elbows out and arms up. Slowly bring your chin down. Look straight ahead. Lift your elbows all the way up. Breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back, 
Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you, arms forward, elbows touch, pointing forward. Good. Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose, down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up as you exhale. Open your mouth up wide like you're fogging up a mirror on the ceiling. Look back, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, keep the weight in your heels. Lift your kneecaps, squeeze your glutes, lock your legs. Exhale, head up, weight stays in the heels, hips a little forward, stomach in, look back, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. So as you inhale, suck your stomach in, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles. Exhale, head up, even as you exhale, abdomen in, shoulders down, elbows up, triceps parallel to the floor. Inhale, head down. Every new inhale, you wanna take in more air than the last breath to expand your lung capacity. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath, push the air out. Inhale, head down. Let's make this the last breath in the first set. Spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller, suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, take your time, eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in, keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch. Nice, change, arms down, can roll out your shoulders and head. Second set, feet together, interlock your ten fingers, switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, all of your knuckles under your chin like glue. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt, grow taller out of the base of your spine, and begin inhale, chin down and arms up, breathing in through your nose, lift your elbows up, suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth, slowly tilt your head back, stretch your arms forward, exhale more, elbows touch. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up for six, Five, four, three, two, elbows touch, one. Inhale, head down, use the full six seconds to inhale. Take in more and more and more air. Exhale, head up, use the full six seconds to exhale. Synchronize your breath with your body movements. Elbows touch, lungs empty. Inhale, head down. Exhale, head up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, two more. Exhale. Inhale, head down, last breath. Second set, deepest breath of your life. When your lungs are totally full, surprise yourself. Take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now, elbows touch. Change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders and head. We'll continue. Ardha Chandrasana with Padasasana, half moon with hands to feet pose. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head, sideways palms together. Interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, nice tight white knuckle grip. Stretch up out of your waist and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, reach up a little taller like you're trying to touch the ceiling. And when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. Bring the weight into your heels, push your hips a little forward so your hips and pelvis open to the front uh, wall. Squeeze your palms together, head and arms back, touch your biceps to your ears, stomach in. Inhale, breathing, stretch up out of your waist, try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, breathing, absolutely straight line, slowly bend your body to the right. Without bending elbows, without bending knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility, trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Keep the weight in your heels, push your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears, push your left hip a little forward to get your two hips in line. Now bring your right shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower, petal blooming, come down, push, 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 change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle, hips forward, arms back, stretch up, and slowly bend to the left as you press your hips to the right. Make sure that you can breathe in and out through your nose. 
For the rest of class, we're going to breathe in and out through the nose. If at any point you find that you're breathing through your mouth, you're holding your breath, or you're finding it difficult to breathe, that might be a sign that you've gone a little too far. Less is more until one day less is less, and that's when you go a little deeper. Once you can breathe, focus on alignment. Weight in the heels, arms with the ears. Left shoulder a little forward, right hip a little forward. Once you've got the alignment, once you can breathe, then go for depth. Come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle. First back bend, take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, relax your head back as far as it goes. You can give your head a gentle shake. Look for the floor behind you, squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and immediately bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you. Full spine back bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, and upper back bend your total spine back bending so that you're not collapsing into your lower back. Keep the weight in your heels, lock your legs, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward, and bring your arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back, change. Inhale to come up, big stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold. Arms with your hands to floor, drop your head. Go for a walk, move your hips, shake your head. This is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, flexible. Padasasana, hands to feet pose, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your calves, your heels, or your heels from underneath. Step on all 10 fingers. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor, pulling is the object of stretching. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling on the back of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. So this smiling happy face is kind of poetic. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your big toes, lift your hips up, push your knees back, stretch your spine down. Good, change. Come up with a flat back, chin away from your chest. Knees can bend as you lift. Very nice. Arms down. And you stand a little taller, second set, feet together, arms overhead, sideways, palms together, switch the grip, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, keep the weight in your heels, hips forward, arms back, big stretch up, and slowly drop to the right as you push your hips to the left without holding your breath, without bending elbows, without bending knees, press your hips to the left, stretch your upper body to the right. For my super flexy folks, it's not that you're hyperextending your knees or elbows, so that you're lifting your kneecaps, squeezing your quadricep muscles, using your biceps, your triceps, your grip strength, right? So you're using your strength just as much as your flexibility here. Weight in the heels, bring the right rib cage a little forward, left thigh a little forward, inhale, lengthen, exhale, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle. Imagine you could lean against a wall behind you. Big inhale, stretch up, slow exhale. Bend to the left, push your hips to the right. So push your hips to the right, stretch your upper body to the left, equal simultaneous 50-50. Don't collapse. Lift your chin, lift your chest. It's a very proud posture and you have so much to be proud of for practicing yoga today. Good for you. Keep the weight in your heels, hips a little forward, upper body back. Push your right hip forward, get your two hips in line. Now bring your left shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Come down, push, push push, change, inhale to come up. Second heart opener, keep your eyes open, relax your head back as far as it goes. Squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and bring your arms back with your ears. Imagine you're tracing your fingers along the ceiling. So keep the arms and legs active. That'll help you stay away from collapsing into the lower back, right? It's really the whole spine bending. Weight in the heels, push your hips forward, squeeze your palms together, arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back, change. Inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold hands to floor, drop your head, go for another walk, move your hips, shake your head. Second set, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your legs or your heels from underneath, step on all 10 fingers, pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up. There should be no room for light and air between the upper and lower body. Touch stomach to thighs, chest to knees. Imagine you're gonna hook your ribs over your knees one day. Slide your nose between your calves down towards the floor. One day, top of the head touches the top of the feet. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, push your knees back, try to lock your legs. Good, change, come up. Arms with ears, knees can bend as you lift. Arms down, hold still, take a breath. 
second set. Step your right foot to the right about, pardon me, not second set, first set, awkward Yukatasana. Step your right foot to the right, six inches hip width distance, inside to your feet parallel. So you're not taking too wide of a step, right? Bring your arms up parallel to the floor, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers, triceps active. Reach your arms forward, suck your stomach in, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. Feet flat, spine straight, all of the weight in your heels, sit down halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lean your upper body back, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscle, suck it in, hold it in tight, bring a little bit more weight back into your heels, roll the shoulders back and down, stretch the arms forward, lift your chin up, chest up, lean back, fall back, way back, change, and heel to come up, keep your arms there. Push your hips a little forward, spread your toes wide, come up maximum on your tippy tippy toes like a ballerina. Stretch up first, bend your knees, sit down, and lean back. So think about tucking your tailbone under. Notice if the knees want to come in or out, keep six inches between toes, heels, knees and hands, heels up, knees up, spine straight, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change and heel to come up, last part, still breathing. Squeeze your knees, thighs together, let your heels come a little off the floor, and slowly sit down. Take your time. Listen to your body, stop whenever you want, or keep sitting down until there's a half inch gap between your hips and your heels. Squeeze your knees together and forward, thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight from the side, looks like you're holding a box. Change, slowly come up, squeeze knees together as you lift, good, heels down, right foot back, arms and shoulders down, take a breath. Okay, second set, step your right foot to the right, hip width distance, not too big of a step. Insides of your feet parallel, arms up parallel to the floor. Reach your arms forward, pull your abdomen in, bend your knees, sit back and down. So triceps tight, fingertips active, shoulders soft. You're toning through your arms, your abdomen, your legs. Bring the weight back into your heels and lift up. Keep your neck long, keep your chin up, chest up. Change, come on up, keep your arms there. Push your hips forward, lift your heels. Now we're playing around with balance. Stretch up and sit down. Lean back so you're really working your core here. Notice if you fold forward a lot or stick your butt out a lot, press the hips forward, lean back, sit down, and change. And heel to come up, last part, still breathing. Squeeze knees, thighs together. Let your heels come a little off the floor and slowly sit down. So you wanna go slow, that helps to really work the muscles. Squeeze knees together and forward. One day sitting all the way down, lift your chest. Drop your shoulders, re-engage your fingertips, your arms are your counterbalance. Change, slowly come up, knees together. Good, heels down, right foot back, arms and shoulders down. Eagle pose, Garasana, we're gonna do the right side first. Inhale your arms over your head, big expansive stretch up. Exhale, swing right arm under left arm. Right elbow under left elbow, cross first at your elbows, again if you can at your wrists, palms together, thumbs towards your nose. You can also interlock fingers, Grab a thumb or grab your shoulders and give yourself a big bear hug. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down into a chair. Stay down there, lean back and bring your right leg over your left leg as high as possible. Right over left, cross twist and breathe slow in and out through your nose. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back, bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes. You want wrists, elbows, knees, and ankles all in one line. Sit down a little bit more, pull your elbows down, arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head, left side, swing your left arm, zoom, under your right arm, left under right, palms together, thumbs towards your face, pinkies away from your face. Pull elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, try to stay low, lean back, and bring your left leg over your right leg as high as possible, cross twist, and eventually wrap the foot. You might notice that this side feels a little or a lot different from the other side. It does for me, and that's okay. We're not, um, we are not symmetrical, and like that's really not the goal of yoga. The goal of yoga is self-realization. Knees a little to the left, upper body to the right. You want shoulders over hips. Bring the weight back into your heel. Sit a little bit lower, pull the elbows down, lean your upper body back. Good, change feet together, arms over your head, right in the second set. Swing right arm, under left arm, pull elbows down. So one day fingertips go below the nose, bend your knees, sit down, lean back, and bring your right leg over your left leg in hamstring over quadriceps. You wanna push the left hip a little forward, 
right shoulder a little forward, elbows over knees, pull elbows down. Maybe sit a little bit lower in the second set, push the top leg into the bottom leg, pull elbows down, suck your stomach in, then your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. Last one, here we go. Bring your left arm, wee, under your right arm, pull elbows down, one knee fingertips in line. Pull elbows down, sit down, lean back, and bring your left leg over your right leg, left over right, relax your face, and breathe. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the left, upper body to the right, twist like ropes, stick your butt out a little bit, fold forward to sit down, and then lean your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. Slowly with control, arms down. Party time, you can grab a sip of water if you want. Cheers, friends. Okay, let's do it. Standing, I'm gonna adjust this thing a little bit. Standing, head to knee, Dande Amana. We Johnny Shrasna, shift your weight to your left leg. Lock your left leg, squeeze your left thigh tight. We'll lift your right leg up, can point your toes, flex your toes, keep your toes flexed back to your face. Option to stay right here, or as you're ready, round down, and eventually pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, webbing to webbing grip. Now from start to finish, standing legs should be solid, concrete, one piece, mat post, unbroken. You have no knee. If you know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently. Lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Take a breath. Kick your heel forward, flex all five toes back towards your face from the ankle. You're training your Achilles to stretch. If both legs lock from the side legs, make an upside down L like Linda, then bend elbows down. Touch elbows to calf muscles. One day, elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Change, arms straight, bend the right knee, right foot down. Shift your weight to your right leg so your big toe points forward. Squeeze your inner thigh, outer thigh, lift your kneecap, squeeze your outer seat, your side seat, as well as your gluteus maximus, right? Lift your left leg up, point your toes, flex your toes, keep your toes flexed back, especially your pinky toe. Option to stay here or pull your abdomen in, round down and pick up your left foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, even your thumbs included in the grip. From the side, you want your heel under your knee. Stomach in, face relaxed, breathing normal. When you're ready, slowly, gently lift your left leg up. Notice if your foot crosses the center line of your body, bring your heel to the left, press your heel forward, flex your toes back. If both legs lock, you feel tremendous stretching feeling on the backs of both legs, maybe even a cramp on the top of your thigh, then bend elbows down. Notice if the elbows are going out and the shoulders are tensing up, bring the elbows in, shoulders down, chest down, so one day elbows go below the calf muscle. Change, arms straight, bend the leg, left foot down. You can put your hands on your back and do a little back bend, hmm, or an even, ha. Huh. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg, squeeze your left thigh tight, lift your right leg up, flex your toes back, pull abdomen in, and as you're ready, round down, and eventually pick up your right foot. Can you keep your left big toe on the floor the whole time? Concentrate, meditate, don't forget to have fun. Inhale, lift your right leg up. If both legs lock, big toe down, then bend elbows down. If elbows go below calf muscle and big toes still down, then tuck chin to chest, keep your big toe down, touch your forehead to your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Whenever you're ready, head up, arms straight, bend the leg, right foot down. Shift your weight to your right leg, squeeze your right thigh tight, take a breath. I needed to take a breath. Okay, lift your left leg up. This is cardiovascular. Flex your toes back, pull your abdomen in, round down, pick up your foot. Can you keep your right big toe on the floor? Pull the abdomen in, relax your face, breathe through the nose, and when you're ready, lift your left leg up. If both legs lock, bend elbows down, keep the big toe down. If elbows go below calf muscles, keep the big toe down. Tuck chin to chest, put your forehead on your knee. So you gotta move the heel forward, Hip forward, toes back, knee and head touch. Keep the big toe down. And when you're ready, bring your head up, arms straight, bend the left leg, 
left foot down, change. Good for you. Standing bow pulling pose, Dandayamana, Dhanurasana. Same thing, you're gonna try and keep the big toe down on the standing leg. Bring your right hand up, out to the right. Give yourself a high five for practicing yoga today. Yes, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right foot, at the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger. Bring your left arm up and back, right hip forward and down, knees together to start. Option to stay here. Sometimes this is enough of a back bend and shoulder opener. When you're ready, lock your left leg, point your right toes, lift your chin, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly charge your body forward. Simultaneously kick your right leg back and up. Take your time. Slowly bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head. So from the side, two heels in line. Kick back and up. In other words, two shoulders in line. Touch your chin to your shoulder, shoulder blade, scapula, stretching away from the body. Kicking and stretching should be equal. Simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. Body down more, leg up more. Charge your body forward, touch your shoulder to your chin. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly with control. Kick yourself up, feet together, arms down. Bring your left hand up, out to the left. Reach back without turning or twisting your shoulder. Pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle. Bring your right arm up and back, left hip forward, knees together to start. Lift your right kneecap, point your left toes, lift your chin, take a breath, stretch up. And as you're ready, slowly kick into your hand. Simultaneously charge your body forward. Take your time. Slowly bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head. So from the side, two heels in line. Kick back and up. In other words, two shoulders in line. This is a really good posture for stretching out your chest and shoulder, especially a lot of us are tight in the shoulder. So really think right shoulder forward, left shoulder back. Keep your chin lifted. Keep breathing in and out through the nose. Slowly bring the body down to parallel, big toe up to the ceiling. The harder you kick, you can balance forever, almost to the end. Body down more, leg up more. Charge your body forward, touch your shoulder to your chin. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change. Slowly kick yourself up. Feet together, arms down, take a breath. Second set, bring your right hand up, out to the right. Reach back, pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle left arm up and back, right hip forward, knees together. Lock your left leg, point your right toes, lift your chin, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, breathe. That's all you have to do. Kick into your hand, stretch forward, breathe through your nose. So see how my feet aren't in line? You have to come down a lot to get your two heels in line. Keep your left arm lifted, that's your counterbalance. Body down more, Leg up more, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly, kick yourself up. Okay, last one, bring your left hand up, out to the left, reach back, pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle, thumb with the index, knees together, right arm up and back with your ear. Lift your chin, lift your shoulder, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, breathe. You're kicking in two directions, you're kicking back, and you're kicking up. Make sure you're not just kicking back. Start to point your big toes to the ceiling as you come down. Slide your right shoulder forward. Eventually touch chin and shoulder together. Tricep tight. Body down more. Leg up more. Charge your body forward. Kick, kick, kick. Good. Change. Kick yourself up. Okay. Enough of that. Come to the back of your mat. Tool of Indasana balancing stick. So, so far in the standing, uh, in the balancing series, We've rounded the spine, we bent the spine, we did a back bend. So now we wanna stretch the spine, right? We wanna come down with a nice flat back. Imagine there's a board strapped to your back. Feet together, arms overhead sideways, palms together, interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, take a big stretch up, step your right foot forward, shift your weight to your right foot, stretch, point your left toes, and when you're ready, come down like a slow moving seesaw, arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor. So from the side, body makes a T like Tom, but not a broken umbrella. Body down more, leg up more, stretch, 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 change. Left foot down, right foot back, pull your abdomen in, lean back. Step your left foot forward, 
shift your weight to your left foot, stretch, option to stay here, or when you're ready, tilt. At first, maybe just one or two inches, eventually coming down parallel to the floor. Don't let your hip open, right? So point your two hips and your two armpits down towards the floor. Chest down, chin forward, leg up, palms together, stretch. Change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down, hold still. It's really hard to hold still when our heart rate is um, up, but this is a nice example of like, if you can find a little bit of peace and stillness in yoga, you can find a little bit of peace and stillness anywhere, right? Second set, arms over your head, palms together, switch the grip, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lean back, step your right foot forward, shift your weight to your right foot, stretch, point your left toes and come down without letting the hips open, right? Drop your left hip down, spiral your inner left thigh up, pull your abdomen in, touch your biceps to your ears, charge your body forward, stretch, change, left foot down, right foot back, big stretch up, stomach in, step your left foot forward, imagine there's a board strap to your back, stretch and tilt, coming down slow, so try not to fling yourself into it, the slower you do, the more muscle you use, squeeze your palms together, charge your body forward like a human tug of war, stretch, 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 change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down, and enough of that. You can come to the top of your mat and face the long side of your mat for the separate leg series. I will face you. Standing, separate leg stretching, Dandayamana, Vikaptapada, Paschimottanasana. Inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, a generous step, arms down parallel to the floor. You can point your toes forward or turn your toes in, pigeon toe your feet to rotate the hips and pelvis internally. Lock your legs, lift your chest, and swan dive forward. Good, grab your heels from behind. If you can't grab your heels, you can also grab the outsides of your feet, your pinky toes, or start with your hands on the floor in front of you. Everybody roll forward until your hips are over your heels. Lift your hips up, push your knees back, lock your legs. For my super flexible folks, think less about pushing your knees back and more about lifting your hips and kneecaps up. Everybody roll forward, lift your hips up, lock your legs, pull, stretch, touch your head to the floor in between your feet. Good, change, slowly come up, take your time, no rush. Step your right foot back to the place, arms over your head, and slowly with control, arms down, stand tall. Second set, arms over your head, big stretch up. Step your right foot to the right, a generous step. Be generous with yourself, turn your toes in, lock your legs, and lift your chest and go down, lead with your heart all the way down. If you don't have a heart, lead with your lower ribs all the way down, but keep coming back to yoga. You will cry eventually. Grab your heels from behind, bend your elbows back, elbows to caps, shoulders to ceiling, belly button to spine, everybody roll forward. Push your big toes down, lift your hips up, pull and stretch. If your knees are bending and your hips are back, put your hands on the floor in front of you. Walk forward, trust that your hands will catch you. Now lift your hips up, push your knees back, now fold forward, pull stomach through thighs, chest through knees, eventually head touches the floor in between your feet. Very nice, change, come up, lift your ribs as you come up. Good, step your right foot back to the place, arms up, and slowly with control, arms down. So think of everything we do in this 75 minutes as part of your yoga practice, even how you like mindfully sip water or mindfully bring your arms down, right? Triangle, trikonasana, inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, a big step, arms down parallel to the floor, push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, turn your right foot out, maybe turn it out a half inch more. So if you're on the long side of your mat, you want the inside edge of your right foot parallel to your mat, two heels in line. You can also turn your left heel out a little bit, left toes in a little bit. Inhale, bend your right leg, and you can bounce a couple times to warm up the hips and knees. And then sit as low as you can, lunge. Lean back, keep your spine straight in the middle, and move your arms at the same time. Right elbow in front of the knee, left arm up to the ceiling, look up towards the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder, profile of your face visible to the side of your mat. Push your left hip forward and down, stomach in. Push your right knee back with the help of your elbow, stomach in. Reach your left arm up, stretch your right arm down. Use your right obliques to lift off the right side thigh. Turn, twist upper body back like spine twisting posture. Lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Change, pull your abdomen in as you reverse out. Turn your right toes in, 
left toes out, make sure your heels are in line, not crisscross. Inhale, bend your left leg in lunge. You can bounce a couple times. You can also try taking a bigger or smaller step if it helps you to sit down. And then sit as low as you can, knee over your ankle, but not beyond your ankle. Push your hips forward, lean back, keep your spine straight in the middle, and move your arms at the same time. Elbow in front of the knee, right arm up to the ceiling, both palms should be facing forward. So palms facing forward, look up towards the ceiling, lift your right shoulder up, touch your shoulder to your chin. Push your right hip forward and down, stomach in. Push your left knee back with the help of your elbow. Lift your chest, stretch your arms apart, turn, twist upper body back, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Lock your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change, pull your abdomen in as you come out, step by step, left toes in, right foot back, arms up, and consciously with control, arms down, take a breath. Second set, triangle, arms overhead, big stretch up. Step your right foot to the right, a generous step. Press your hips forward, lean back, open through your hips and pelvis. Turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in a little bit, two heels in line. Inhale, bend your right leg, lunge. Pull the abdomen in, squeeze the glutes, and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee. Hover your fingertips between your big and second toe. Don't touch the floor, don't push any weight on the floor. Look up and stretch up. You want a nice long line from your ankle to the crown of your head. So if your thigh isn't yet parallel to the floor, maybe have the forearm in front of the knee so you're not collapsing all the way down. But you're also not lifting all the way up, right? It's this nice middle ground where we're really using the core strength. As you're ready, you're going to bend your right knee, sit down more, turn, twist, open, stretch, lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor, change. Pull abdomen in as you reverse out, right toes in, left toes out two heels in line, inhale, bend your left leg, lunge, pull the abdomen in, press the hips forward, lean back, and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee, right arm up to the ceiling, look up and stretch up. This posture is so smart, you are simultaneously opening your hips and strengthening your inner thighs. You're simultaneously opening your shoulders and chest and strengthening your core and arms. Reach your right arm up, stretch your left arm down, engage your abdominal wall, sink your right hip down, bring the left rib cage forward, turn and twist. Lock your right leg, keep your whole right foot, even the outside edge of your right foot, flat on the floor. Change abdomen in as you come up, left toes in, right foot back, arms up, and slowly arms down. So far in the separate leg series, we stretched the spine right, we went down with a flat back, we just twisted the spine, and now we're gonna round our spine, squeezing, compressing the abdominal wall. Standing separate leg, head to knee, Dandayamana, Vikapapada, Janu Shirasana. Inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together, just cross your thumbs. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, three to four feet, still a nice big step. Pivot on your heels to one side of the room. If you're on the long side of your mat, you'll face the back of your mat. Turn your back toes in, squeeze your left glutes, and push your left hip forward one, two, three, four, five times. Two hips in line, two heels in line. Back side foot makes a 45 degree angle. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. Squeeze your left glute, press your left hip forward all the way down so your hips stay in line. Chin to chest, pull your abdomen in, touch your forehead and knee together. Now, if your forehead and knee aren't yet touching, you can try taking a bigger step. You can bend your front leg, round your spine more, eventually forehead and knee touch, but you're never forcing your body. Stretch your fingertips beyond your big and second toe, bring maximum weight to your front foot, right hip up, left hip forward, two hips in line, throat choked, jaw relaxed, eyes open, stomach in, breathing normal. Push your forehead into your knee a couple times real quick, lock both legs, hands together first, change. Slowly come up, squeeze the left glute, press the left hip forward all the way up, arms of your ears, head up last. Good, pick up your toes, pivot on your heels to the other side of the room or the front of your mat. Uncross your heels, turn your back toes in, press your right hip forward on the side, you can squeeze your right glute. Stretch up, chin to chest, and go down. 
pull your abdomen in, tuck your chin to your chest, round your spine, touch your exactly forehead and knee together, front side compression, throat choke, dry relaxed, eyes open, breathing normal. And you can always bend your front leg or take a bigger step to bring your knee and head together, but you're never forcing your body to round, especially if you have like a history of slit discs, rounding the spine, any sort of folding forward are ones to be cautious of. Eventually here, you're really compressing, strengthening, toning the front of the body, but it should, it should not feel like painful, right? A little uncomfortable and right there with you, but never painful, never going to a point of pain. Push your forehead into your knee a couple times real quick, lock both legs, hands together, change, slowly uncurl, right hip forward, right shoulder forward, full stop at the top. Good, pivot on your heel, step your right foot back, and slowly arms down, take a breath. Second set, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, other thumb on top. Step your right foot to the right, three to four feet, pivot on your heels, turn your back toes in, move your left hip forward, stretch up, chin to chest, and go down. Arms with your ears. Can you look at your belly button all the way down? You can't see your front foot all the way down. Stretch your fingertips beyond your big and second toe. Touch your knee and head together so you're not smelling your knee weird. You're not kissing your knee gross. You're actively pushing your forehead, your exactly forehead into knee. Chin to chest, compressing, squeezing, strengthening, toning the front of the body as you round and open the spine. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, imagine you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, your chest, arms with ears, head up last. Good. Pick up your toes and pivot. I'm going to face you. Make sure your heels are in line but not crisscross. Turn your back toes in. Move your right hip forward. Notice if your hands are coming apart. Press palms together. Use your biceps. Stretch up. Chin to chest. Go down. So can you keep your hands together for the last one? A little bit of the balance challenge. For balance, it helps to have the weight in the front foot. Chin to chest, pull your abdomen in, round your middle spine up to the ceiling, touch your forehead and knee together. Every time you exhale, pull your abdomen in even more. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change. Press your palms together, press your biceps into your ears, chin to chest, Head up last, lovely, pivot on your heels, right foot back, slowly arms down. Come to the middle of your mat for tree pose, Tadasana. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, and lift your right leg up. Touch your heel to your costume, slowly, gently. Let your right knee drop down and back into a half loaded shape, never force your body. Right hand up to the center of your chest, and if you can balance, left hand. Elbows down, spine straight, take a breath. Good, change, right leg down, shift your weight to your right leg, squeeze your right thigh tight, and lift your left leg up. Heel to costume, slowly, gently. Let your left knee drop into a nice half lotus shape. Left hand up, and if you can balance without your foot falling, right hand up. Move your left hip forward, left knee back. Notice if you're sticking your butt out, press your hips forward and stretch up, abdomen in. Good, release, change, left leg down. Option to do a second set of tree pose, really opening through the hips, or try another fun posture called toe stand, padanustasana. Pick a spot on the floor, four feet in front of you. Don't move your eyes, lock your left leg, and lift your right leg up, heel to costume, let your right knee drop. You can bring one or both hands together, and as you're ready, start to fold forward. Hands to the floor, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your left knee, sit down on your heel. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips, stretch your spine up. Left hand up to the center of your chest, right hand up, palms together, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. Good. When you're ready, hands to floor, push your hands into the floor to lift your hips up, heel down. You can come up on two feet or press your hips forward to reverse out. Very nice. Change right leg down, shift your weight to your right leg, squeeze your right thigh tight, and lift your left leg up. Heel to costume, let your left knee drop. This time your foot can be anywhere above your knee, anywhere on the thigh. You can bring one or both hands together. I'm not gonna do this one because of a toe injury, but I will walk you through it. Pick a spot on the floor, four feet in front of you. Don't move your eyes, helps with balance, concentration, meditation. Join me in looking to the floor, even if this is all you do today. From here, start to fold forward. Maybe you just angle forward until eventually hands touch the floor. 
You can walk your hands all the way forward, all the way in your arms, lift your right heel, bend your right knee, sit down on your heel. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips. Whether you're in tree or toe, move your left hip forward, left knee down, point your left toes. Left hand up to the center of your chest, right hand up, palms together, elbows down, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. Good. When you're ready, hands to floor, you can come up on two feet or really push your hands into the floor to lift your hips up, straightening the standing leg, heel down, and then press your hips forward, lift from your ribs as you come up. Good. When you're ready, change left leg down onto yourself, give yourself high five, fist bump, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. We are on the floor for the rest of class. I'm going to adjust our camera angle. Whee! Okay. Great. Bring your heels together. Let your toes fall open. Arms down. Palms face the ceiling. Eyes open. Mouth closed. Breathing normal. Take an inhale through your nose and an exhale through your nose. So I really believe that language and words matter and that um, through language we connect with one another and tell each other stories. Um, so if, like for that reason, right, I believe that like identifying pronouns like she, her, or they, them are important. But for that same reason, I think that it's important to know um, specifically one, what I'm going to call a mistranslation of a word in this sequence. So in this style of yoga, you'll hear the term lock your knee a lot, right? Like lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Um, and then I believe that when Bikram um, translated this, I like this sequence, these thoughts in his mind, this, you know, like yoga from um, Hindu, what he was really trying to say is a word that in Sanskrit is called um, bandha, B-A-N-D-H-A, bandha. And the translation of bandha is lock and lift. It's not just like pushing a joint back, it's lifting the capsule up. It's like contracting the muscles around it. And so I think like when Bikram comes to America and he's like, how do I get them to like lift their kneecap or like do a bandha? There's different bandhas in our body. His translation was to say, lock your knee, which is now like kind of iconic in this style of yoga and this like culture of yoga that we're in. But as a reminder, it's a little bit of a mistranslation, I think, right? Uh, when we say lock your knee, it's lock and lift your knee, right? You're lifting the kneecap and there's different bandhas in your body, not just the knee, but the elbows, the pelvic floor is a bandha, um, your abdomen is a bandha. So that's called like Uddiyana bandha. Um, bandhas are something cool to like Google after class. There's a lot of fun stuff there. And once you learn that lock and lift technique in different parts of your body, it can really help you um, stabilize in posture. So you're getting deeper into them while stabilizing the body. So you're not um, like over collapsing into one joint, over utilizing one joint while under utilizing muscles in another part of the body. So again, that word is bandha, B-A-N-D-H-A. We translate it to mean lock your knee. Um, but again, there's bandhas all over the body, and it's the idea of lifting and locking at the same time. Pavana Muttasana, when you're moving pose, lift your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, just below the nice, uh, the <laughs> right shin, nice tight, white knuckle grip, pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body and breathe. Eventually, or in the future, your right knee will touch your right shoulder, but it doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. Change, right leg down, bend your left leg up, pull your knee out and down, avoid your rib cage. Um, if your right calf muscle does not naturally touch the floor, flex your right toes back to your face to anchor your calf down. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up, grab your elbows, each other, give yourself a big hug for coming to class. Squeeze your knees together and down, keep your head on the floor. Without lifting your head, tuck your chin in a little bit, puff your chest up a little bit, head, neck, shoulders on the floor, belly button heavy like lead. Squeeze your knees together, press your shins into your forearms to roll your hips down. Eventually, or in the future, when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Change, arms down, eyes open, take a breath. Second set, bend your right leg up, interlock your fingers, switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, Avoid your rib cage. 
Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body, squeeze and breathe. Change, right leg down, pull your left knee out and down, grab your left shin. Uh, this posture is good for digestion. It's good for grip strength and you are opening through like the hip capsule, right? You're pulling the knee out and down. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up, grab your elbows each other, maybe other elbow on top, all five fingers together. Make sure your heels are in line so the feet aren't crisscross or one isn't higher than the other. That might sound kind of like uh, nitpicky, but when you line up your heels, you're also lining up your hips so that you're evening out the hips. And this thigh extension lets the whole spine lengthen evenly. Change, arms down and eyes open. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back, skip the sit up, roll off to the side, meet us on your stomach. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Elbows to floor, forehead to knees. All right, all right, all right. Turn and lie on your abdomen for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. Place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders. So from a bird's eye view, I can't see your manicure. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, so lift your kneecaps, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% spine strength. Come up halfway only, neck stays long. Elbows bent, Our arms make an L, a 90 degree angle like a rectangle. Roll your shoulders back and down, stretch your elbows to your big toes. Don't forget about your cobra's tail, keep your feet together, toes, heels touch. Lock your legs, squeeze your back, push your feet down, hips down, hands down. Look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change slowly with control, lower down, hip to your right, left ear on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. Second set, bring your chin forward, place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders, elbows point up to the ceiling like grasshopper wings. Zip up your legs, lock your legs, look up and lift, stretch your upper body off the floor. So this is the first of four postures on our abdomen. It's called the spine strengthening series. This is like the real good stuff in the class, right? We're strengthening all of the muscles that surround the back using only our own body weight. Keep your chest lifted, shoulders down, legs active. Lift your kneecaps, press your feet down, lift your chest up, change slowly, lower down. Look to your left, right here on your mat, arms down, heels open. If looking left and right with your arms down does not feel good for your neck or shoulder, you can bend one or both arms so that your hands are close to your face and this will take some pressure away from the neck or shoulder. Okay, Lokas Shalavasana, chin forward. Arm straight position, rotate your arms to face the floor. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can. One day pinky fingers touch, but hands never overlap. Lock your right leg. Right leg should be solid, concrete, one piece, lamppost, unbroken. Point your right toes, lift your right leg up. So again, it's not just that you're like straightening uh, like the kneecap, it's that you're really contracting the quadricep muscle here. Point your right toe, you're also squeezing your glute, your calf. Lock your right leg, lift your thigh up, change right leg down, relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left uh, toes and lift your left leg up. You're also locking your arms. Think less about like jamming the elbows and more about contracting the triceps. So especially if you're hyper flexible, micro bend your elbows here. So you're pressing your shoulders down, not your elbows. Change left leg down, third part, tuck your chin in a little bit so your mouth is down, there's no wrinkles in your neck. Bring your arms a little closer underneath you, spread your fingers wide. Zip up your legs, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, roll forward and lift both legs up, come up, everybody come up. You can do it, struggle a little harder. Don't give up, mouth down, shoulders down, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, lift your thighs up, change slowly, lower down, bring your arms out, look to the right, lift here on your mat, shoulders down, eyes open, slow inhale through your nose, and slow exhale through your nose. Second set, bring your chin forward, arm straight position, rotate your arms, palms face the floor. You can keep your arms out to the side or gently bring your arms underneath you. And it's not that you're hyper extending your elbows, you're just stretching the tendons and ligaments in the arms and hands. Lock your right leg, point your right toes and lift your right leg up. Notice if the hip starts to lift up, keep the hip down. This is really good practice for keeping the hips in line in like um, balancing stick and standing bow, but here you don't have to balance. So hip and forearm, maintain contact, lift your heel up, change slowly, right leg down. Relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. Stretch the big toe to the back wall, keep the sole of the foot flat to the ceiling. 
Eyes open, mouth closed, face relaxed, still breathing. Lock your left leg, lengthen and lift. Change, left leg down, grand finale. Chin in a little bit, mouth on your mat. Bring your arms close underneath you. Squeeze your buns, press your shoulders down, triceps tight. Lock your legs, roll forward, lift both legs up. You can do it, mouth down, shoulders down, squeeze your butt. Keep your knees, feet together, quadriceps tight, calves tight, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, roll forward, lift your thighs up, change, slowly lower down, bring your arms out, look to the left, right here on your mat, and let that one go. So one of the things that we're practicing, I think at least that we're practicing in yoga, is really being in the moment. So when you're doing the posture, you're giving it your all, and then when you hear change, you let it go and you give the savasana your all, right? So you're placing equal importance on rest as you are play. Purnishalabhasana, full locus, chin forward, arms out to the side like airplane wings, feet together, toes and heels touch, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, look up and lift, arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor like a 747 taking off. Just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body's in the air. Look up to the ceiling where your eyes go, body nose to follow. So in cobra pose, we lifted the chest. In locust, we lifted the legs. In full locust, we're lifting the chest and legs at once. This posture is so good for your back strength, really good for opening through the shoulders, the chest, keep your neck long. Lock your legs, point your toes, thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good change, slowly lower down, tuck in your wings. Look to your right, left ear on your mat. Take an inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. Breathe in. And with control, slowly breathe out. Second set, bring your chin forward, arms out to the side, perpendicular to the body, feet together, lock your legs, point your toes, look up and Lift everything lifting off the floor at once. See if you can lift your hands a little bit higher in the second cat set. Keep all five fingers together. Thumb with your index finger, hands at a 45 degree angle. So the palms aren't all the way down, but they're also not like all the way up, right? Hands at a 45 degree angle, knees, feet together. Stretch your big toes to the back wall. Lift your heels and the top of your head to the ceiling. Thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up. Come up a little higher at the end. Good change with control, lower down. Tuck in your wings. Look to the left, right ear on your mat, and let that one go. So it can be tempting to think of yoga as like postures with a little bit of a break in between. But what if every once in a while you viewed your yoga practice as savasanas with some postures in between so that rest becomes the main thing that we're working on? It's like we're purposely discombobulating ourselves a little bit so that we can rest better, so that we have a little bit more stillness. Dhanurasana, floor bow. Bring your chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, around the outside, around the outside. All five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers. Squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up to the ceiling, and start to kick into your hands. Continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission. Notice if you're on your thighs, roll forward, freeze between your ribs and hips, and then hold still. Notice if you're rocking back and forth, kick a little bit less, do little sips of air in and out to your nose. Try to keep your ankles and knees in line. So notice if like your knees are out and your feet are together, that's when you wanna bring the knees in, feet out, wrist straight, look up, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your right, left ear on your mat, back into that savasana, that stillness, that breath. Second set. Bring your chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes, thumbs with your index fingers, squeeze your tush, point your toes, keep your neck long, look up and kick. You are kicking in two directions. You're kicking back as well as up. If your knees hurt in this posture, try kicking up more than you're kicking back. Notice if your wrists are bending here, use upper fingertip strength, bring the insides of the wrists closer together so the wrists, elbows, and shoulders are in line. Look up to the ceiling, touch your big toes to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your left, right here on your mat, and let that one go. As you inhale, feel the backs of your ribs expand. As you exhale, let your shoulders fall. Okay, 
Bring your chin forward, put your hands on the floor, push up, come to the top of your mat, fixed firm, Supta Vajrasana. Stand on your knees, you can open your knees eight inches, or sorry, you can open your knees, open your feet, point your toes to the wall behind you so the insides of your feet are parallel. As you're ready, you're gonna walk your hands back and sink your hips down. You can keep your hands in front of you, beside you, or behind you the whole time. If you can sit down between your heels and you're not in pain, put your hands on your feet, Bend your right elbow down, left elbow down, drop your head back, head to the floor, tuck your chin in, neck shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows, each other, and hold. Wherever you are is perfect. You want a gentle stretch, never a point of pain. Change, put your hands on your feet, press yourself up carefully with control, head up last, very nice, turn around, savasana, as you come out of the posture, you get a nice rush of blood to your hips, your knees, your ankles, and your toes. And it should feel really nice to lie on your back after all of those postures on the abdomen. Think about letting your whole body stretch out and realign to the floor. Let the floor hold you up. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. Okay, turn, come to the top of your mat, second set, fixed firm, open your knees, open your feet. As you're ready, walk your hands back, sink your hips down. If this posture is easy for you to do, have your knees together the whole time. That's the next step, knees together. Put your palms on your soles, right elbow down, left elbow down, drop head back, head to floor. Oh, tuck your chin in, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows, you can inhale. Exhale. Good. Put your hands on your feet. Press yourself up carefully. Head up last. Very nice. Turn around. Savasana. So if something hurts, don't do it. But sometimes there's a little bit of a gray area that gets overlooked where it's hard to tell, like, you know, is this a little uncomfortable or is this painful? Um, and the truth is that every person is different and every day is different. So I can't answer that question for you. And I know in my own practice, it's hard for me to answer that question for myself too. But my litmus test is always like, how do you feel after class? If in class, something is a little uncomfortable, but afterwards it feels good. Yes, dig into that. But if in class, something feels a little uncomfortable and afterwards you're like hobbling around, that might be a sign that you went a little too far. Um, if your back hurts after class, the first thing to take out is the sit-ups. Um, and then from there, you can start to examine anything where you round the spine or fold forward. Those are the ones that you wanna be careful of if you're finding that like your back is hurting after class and not in the way of like, ooh, I worked out, my back muscles are a little sore, but in the way of like, ouch, ouch, it hurts to stand up. So you're always welcome to skip the sit-ups by rolling off to the side. The sit-ups, just like everything else we do are optional. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Good, come to the um, middle of your mat, half tortoise, Ardha Kramasana. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs. Big stretch up and slowly go down. Chin away from your chest, go down with a flat back. So forehead to floor first, little fingers to floor, pull your abdomen in, press your palms together, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down. You're stretching through the shoulders, the neck, middle back, lower back, hips, everything stretching, opening. Reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, stretch, stretch, stretch. So we're gonna use the bandhas in our pelvic floor and our abdomen and our arms. So lock and lift the pelvic floor, abdomen and arms and change. Slowly come up, abdomen in, good. Arms down, turn around, svasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. So if the sit-ups hurt your back, skip them. But the flip side of that is that um, strengthening your core is also really good for preventing back injury. The same way that we do the spine strengthening series where we're on our stomach strengthening the muscles that surround our back, we purposely do the sit-ups because strengthening the front of your core will help protect the back of your core. Think of your torso as like a band um, and you really wanna be engaging 
both sides of that band, the front, the back, and the sides, right, in order to be able to sit up tall. So if you're able to do the sit-ups without pain, I do recommend it because it's really good for strengthening the abdominal wall, which is also part of what helps you stand up tall. But if it ever hurts or after class, you're like, ooh, my back, skip the sit-ups. So you can do that here, roll off to the side or legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Okay, come to the back of your mat, second set, half tortoise, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, other thumb on top, big stretch up and slowly go down. So right, you're lifting your pelvic floor, your abdomen, lifting the arms, right, the banda, forehead to floor, little fingers to floor, stomach in, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize, stretch. And change, come on up, chin away from your chest, lift through the ribs, very nice, arms down, turn around, savasana. So even within a repetitive sequence like 26 and two yoga, um, there's so many choices to make, right? And my recommendation in general is like, keep it simple, less is more. If you find yourself fretting over like, you know, should I do the sit up? Should I roll off to the side? Don't worry about it too much, do what feels good. Keep coming back to class, keep it simple, keep it simple, keep it simple. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. I offer modifications to make class accessible, not to make you go crazy, right? Come to the top of your mat for camel, ustrasana, or deepest back bend. Stand on your knees, six inches between knees and feet. Put your hands on your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Squeeze your tush, push your hips a little forward, lift your chest, and start to look up. When you're ready, let your head drop back all the way. Option to stay here or go back halfway, freeze in the middle. Option to stay here or when you're ready, right hand down, grab your right heel, left hand down, grab your left heel, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. Push stomach, thighs, hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, look for your toes behind you. Change, put your hands on your back, press yourself up, head up last. Turn around, Savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Another mistranslation from Sanskrit to English is the word asana. So you'll notice every, you know, posture that we do ends with asana, right? Pavana Muktasana, uh, we're doing like Ustrasana, Camel, they all end in asana, Savasana, right? And we usually translate asana to mean posture, but it's actually a three-part translation. It's posture, held in stillness with breath. And that's also perhaps what uh, differentiates yoga from like contortion, for example, or circus where there's um, much more movement. Um, yoga in every posture we do, we wanna find a moment to breathe and hold still. And the more little like corrections that you you know, know, the easier it is to be like, oh, well, I've got to move my hip this way. Or, you know, in the sequence, there is often a cue to go a little bit deeper at the end. Keep all that in mind, but also please make sure that you are finding some stillness and breath within each and every posture. I know in my own practice, it can be really tempting to just like routinely make every little adjustment that I'm aware of, but sometimes it's better just to hold still. Practice over perfection. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. So second side of Ustrasana camel, let's see if we can find a little bit of stillness and breath, even if that means you don't go as far into the posture, that's okay. Stand on your knees, eight to 10 inches between your knees, six inches between your feet, put your hands on your lower back, maybe bring elbows together. Push your hips forward, look up, option to stay here or let your head tilt back all the way. You can stay right here or go back halfway, freeze in the middle. You can stay here with your hands on your back or when you're ready, right hand down, grab your right heel, left hand down, grab your left heel, Thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, be still and breathe. And change, put your hands on your back, press yourself up carefully. Very nice, head up last, sit down, turn around, savasana. Still practicing that stillness, that breath. Inhale to your nose, feel your chest rise. 
Exhale to your nose, feel your chest fall. Legs together, arms over your head. Flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. <sighs> Wonderful, come to the middle of your mat, rabbit, sasangasana, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, make L's with your hands like little bunny ears, grab your heels from the outside, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down, slow with control, stomach in, forehead to knees, automatically drop it at the floor, reach back, grab your heels, don't lose the grip, pull on your heels and lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Uh, if, your, uh, if your feet are lifting or your uh, the grip on your heels is sliding, ease up a little bit. You want a full palm grip on your heels, feet on the floor, squeeze your heels together, press your hips forward, lift your shoulders up, round your spine. Good, change hips down slowly, uncurl, vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc. Head up last, very nice. Turn around, savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Inhale. Slowly exhale. Second set. Legs together, arms over your head, biceps with ears, chin to chest, sit up. Try to keep your arms with your ears as you sit up. Okay, come to the middle of your mat. Second set, grab it. Let's hop to it. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Grab your heels from the outside, stretch up chin to chest and go down. Try to feel every vertebrae moving. The parts of your back that you don't feel moving are probably where you're tightest. For most of us, that's the middle spine, forehead to knees, top of head to floor, reach back, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up, squeeze your heels together, press your hips forward, lift your shoulders up, suck your stomach in, round your spine. Good, chain hips down. Slowly uncurl, vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc, cut up last. Very nice, turn around, savasana, letting everything stretch out. Almost to the end, everybody's doing great. We're gonna do two quick sets of head to knee with stretching, they will go fast. Legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Good, they will go fast and we will still find a moment for stillness and breath in every one of them. Right leg out, left leg in, two legs make an L. Inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee, interlock your 10 fingers up to the webbing under the ball of your foot, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, pull your abdomen in. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg all the way in, big stretch up. Turn to your left, chin to chest, go down. If your forehead and knee don't touch with a straight leg, bend your left leg as much as you need, touch knee and head together. All 10 fingers interlocked up to the webbing, bend your elbows down and move your right sit bone, right shoulder down a little bit, two shoulders in line. Change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, option to stay here if you're skipping the sit-ups, otherwise lay down and sit up. Paschimottanasana stretching, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with peace sign fingers, thumbs on top, scoot your butt back, right left, right left, 10 to 15 times. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep a flat back. If your legs are straight, stick your butt out even more and lock your legs. Puff up your chest and fold forward. Stomach to thigh pull, chest to knees stretch. One day toes and head touch. Good, change, come on up, turn around, savasana. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, second set, right leg up, left leg in, two legs make an L, no wider. Make sure that your leg isn't on top of your left thigh. You want the sole of your left foot pushing into inner right thigh bicep. Arms over your head, stretch up. Turn to your right, chin to chest, touch forehead and knee together. Flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll into the left. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, stretch up. Turn to your left, chin to chest, touch your knee and head together. If your forehead and knee touch easily with a bent leg, see if you can straighten your leg or even lock your leg. So one day heel off the floor, elbows to floor, two shoulders in line. Change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, option to stay here or lie down, and sit up. <sighs> Stretching, Hashimotanasana, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with your peace sign fingers. Thumbs on top, scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left, 10 to 15 times. 
Rather than rounding your spine, arch your spine. Stick your butt out a little bit. Knees can stay bent. It helps you keep a flat back. If your legs are straight, lock your legs, puff up your chest and fold. Imagine you're gonna hook your ribs over your knees, stomach to thighs, pull, chest to knees, stretch, one day toes and head touch. Change, come on up, turn around, Savasana. Take a breath, reset, finish strong. Legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up, heels on the floor. Good, okay, come to the middle of your mat, Ardhamatsandrasana, half lord of the fish. This is our last posture. Bend your left leg on the floor, touch your right heel to your left knee corner, right hand close behind you like a second spine, left arm up and over, draw a circle, grab your left knee with your left hand. You're also welcome to have your left leg straight out in front of you. Inhale, big stretch up. Exhale, pull abdomen in, look over right shoulder twist. You can keep your right hand behind you for balance. You can also reach behind you, catch your left thigh with your right hand for a half bind. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull abdomen in, look over right shoulder, twist and twist and twist. Good, change, unwind, swap out your legs. We bend your right leg on the floor, touch left heel to right knee, left arm close behind you like a second spine. Right arm up and over, push your knee out of the way, grab a right knee with right hand, hand, heel and knee, all touch. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over left shoulder. So notice if you're leaning back or to one side, evenly distribute your body weight on your sit bones, sit up tall. And if you can balance here, then reach behind you, catch your right thigh, keep your right knee down, left foot down, point your right toes. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, look back, twist, twist, twist. That feels so good. And change, unwind, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Sometimes it just hits you different. I wish that upon all of you, a posture that you've done a million times and every once in a while you're like, oh yeah, that is it. Okay, legs together, arms up your head, chin to chest, sit up. What a joy to rediscover ourselves over and over again. Come to the middle of your mat, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs. If it hurts to sit on your feet, don't do it silly. Sit on your butt, crisscross applesauce. Every once in a while, try to sit on your feet. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times, sit up nice and tall. Concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Second set, sitting up tall, shoulders down, fingertips active, and begin. Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug. High five. Pat on the back. Turn around. Savasana. Head to the front of your mat. Feet to the back of your mat. Take a breath. So on this uh, day of non-binary gender awareness, I remind you the same way that uh, gender is a fluid spectrum. So is yoga. Um, there's no such thing as being a binary purely good at yoga or purely bad at yoga. There's no such thing as like a good yogi or a bad yogi. There's just people who practice yoga and we're all doing our best. So keep that in mind. If you ever have like in your mindset, like, oh, I'm good at this posture or I'm bad at this posture, um, learn something from like our non-binary friends, right? Of like, it's, it's not so black and white, right? There's beautiful shades of gray same way that we don't just have like night and day, we also have sunset, sunrise, foggy days, stuff like that. Same thing with our yoga practice. It's, it's not so binary. It's ever evolving. It's fluid. One day you love a posture, the next day not so much. And you know that the day after that, it's going to be a little bit different too. And that's a really beautiful sign that you're alive, that you're in your body, and that you're in the present moment. And nobody can take that gift away from you, right? That's something that you've given yourself. So good for you for practicing yoga today. Take an inhale to your nose. Exhale to your nose. You are so very alive. 